Hello, I'm the eternal newbie. The extra L is for lost. As in, I have lost at Dungeons & Dragons. Now, it's not the first time bad things have happened. In the short time I've been playing, 15 months or so, I've had no less than 7 characters die. And I've been through 3 or 4 TPKs. I permanently lost one of my all-time favorite characters during one of these TPKs, so I know loss in this game. But this is the first time I can say I have lost the game. Before I tell you the story of heartache and failure, business. If you enjoy this video, how's about a like or a comment? You know what would be totally outstanding? Subscribing. I've got more than a few other things going on like a Twitter, a Discord, and a YouTube gaming channel where I'm currently running through Final Fantasy VI. If you like old people with slow reflexes rambling on while playing video games ineptly, you'll love my channel. Speaking of that, I've also got a Twitch channel where I stream weekly. You know, as long as my old TI-82 computer can keep up. Check them out. Info for all this stuff is in the video description. Some people tell you you can't really lose at a game like Dungeons & Dragons. I would say to that, if you don't think a person can lose Dungeons & Dragons, you don't know the eternal newbie. Ha <laughs> ha! Huh? That may not have come out right. While I would agree it is not a game about winning, it can definitely be lost. Until now, whenever I was asked, what's my worst moment in D&D, I would have said losing Itham, my Wood Elf monk. That was really bad because I also lost the group which disbanded right afterwards. It was one of my favorite groups of all time. I even tried bringing Itham to new games, but it just never worked out. Well, I have finally topped that moment. For you see, I have lost something infinitely more precious. This horrific event took place with my Eberron group. I've talked about this group a lot. We had just returned from a trip to a spa world when we just happened to run into Mondo. AKA Big Mondo. No, <laughs> you know what, close enough. He has a job for us. He wants us to fix a gargoyle race. I'm not so sure about this. Flood has been kind of skirting the line of not being the good guy he started out as. As a follower of the Traveler, I doubt he would mind, but Flood minds. He's looking for a way to get his good guy mojo back. When we get down there, the gargoyle is already out of the race. His heart is broken. His girl just broke up with him, and he is drowning his sorrows. We could just drop it, but as a good person, can I really stand by and see this poor creature suffer heartbroken? I cannot. And that's totally my only reason for helping him. Yep, no ulterior motives here. The gargoyle gets the girl, we accomplish our mission, and Mondo gets what he wants. Win. Win win. And who better to talk her into taking him back than our very own Romeo, Johnson. One slight problem. Johnson doesn't see the point. I mean, Mondo is already getting what he wants, so why even bother? I try to convince him, even talking about how it's for true love. Nothing I say can break through his heart of stone. That is, until I offer something I know he wants in the form of a bet. If Johnson can get the gargoyles back together, then I won't bring up the bee incident for a month. If you've never seen that video, I'll link in the video description down below. It's a funny story. Basically, Johnson has relations with a giant sentient queen bee and is now engaged to be married to her. Something none of the rest of us seem to be able to drop. But can you really blame us? It may be the greatest thing ever. It even made me re-examine my deep-seated hatred for puns, because bee puns with Johnson are just plain fun. Yep, I'm totally risking my happiness just so he can help the poor gargoyle. You know, get those two crazy kids together and let them find love. And I'm definitely not doing this because I'm secretly hoping he'll somehow end up engaged to the gargoyle as well. After some stuff, we find her and convince her to take him back if he stops drinking and becomes a better person or gargoyle, I guess. Each one of us will help him with something. I teach him responsibility. Johnson gets him to stop drinking and works out with him. Fela? Fela threatens him. I'm starting to think she's pretty evil, although the visions of her killing me in game might also have something to do with that. Merla teaches him life skills and Vlad teaches him how to be a good person. It's a real team effort.
After we got the gargoyle into shape, his girlfriend took him back and he dropped out of the race. So we accomplished our goal, but I have a problem. You see, there was the little matter of the bet. Technically, Johnson didn't win because he wasn't the one that convinced her to go back with her main squeeze. It was a team effort, so it's kind of a gray area. I reluctantly agreed on a two-week period where I can't make fun of Johnson for the whole beef fiasco because I'm such a good person and definitely not because I want to be able to talk him to doing other stupid things in the future. I lost. And I'd lost big. Possibly the biggest loss in the history of Dungeons & Dragons, if not human history. Two weeks without referencing the greatest event I've ever seen? I dare say... Johnson and the Bee is the greatest event in recorded history. I mean, sure, the moon landing was great, but this... I mean, come on! Johnson's brilliant plan to get out of this is to poison the entire colony at the wedding. I'm not a machine! How am I not going to be able to... Ugh! I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Wait, I've got an idea. Is it four days? That's it? If this is my last video, you'll know holding it in killed me. Hmm. Maybe I can get a doctor's note to get out of the bat. I still can't believe he didn't marry that gargoyle. So that was our adventure getting the gargoyle into shape. It's only been a week and I'm already feeling the sting of not being able to tease Johnson about the bees. I guess if I keep myself buzzy... I can make it. Have you ever done a montage style scene? How did it go? Tell me about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, play your character. Don't let your character play you.